a very 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 common topic daily practice but how much importance do we give to anemia anemia and diabetes when we look into it has a lot of things in common let's start with when we look at yeah what does who have to say that if your hemoglobin levels below 13 males and well cramp or deathly non pregnant adult female then is defined as a but looking at what does anemia have was home so iron deficient can impair the glucose but in by it is a diabetic patient more complicated correction of a actually a diabetic and the paradox here is that if you are giving iron load overload to the patient it actually increases the risk of diabetes by disrupting the beta cells by the ox oxidative stress and uh, impairing the mitochondrial function so you have to maintain that thin line between having good iron levels and not very high iron level because we all know that diabetes is an inflammatory disorder and inflammation cytokines which are in disruption of the progenitors to exploitin and promote the apoptosis of the immature erythrocyte and would lead to anemia now when we look at the micro analysis of a country major health problem in the country with is affecting 3 to 6% of the population and the role of micronutrients in our patients with type 2 diabetes cannot be undermined so it is very important to maintain that micronutrient balance in the body now when we look at the epidemiology of anemia associated with diabetes it is two three higher in patients who have diabetes than who do not have diabetes and it was also seen that anemia or patients have a poor glycemic as compared to patients who have good glycemic and it's a well known fact that a risk of Now is definitely higher with on kidney disease. With now, with our own population, the study done the prevalence of anemia amongst the diabetes population is around eight percent, where females encounter it compared to their male counterpart. And why are we talking about anemia so? The studies that it is a risk factor for various micro and macrovascular complications. So anemia is a risk factor for CVD and heart failure in the early stage. Neuropathy has also been seen that is a relevant factor for progression proliferative di diabetic retinopathy. The study done by Dr. Have anemia maybe because of the hypoxia and neovascularization can lead to diabetic retinopathy. Also, the risk of neuropathy, this nephropathy increase. they have a strong risk with anemia and diabetic foot ulcers they have seen the percent of the with diabetic foot ulcers have anemia so when we adjust the other uh, uh, independent predictors anemia 7% mortality in our patients with diabetes now the causes of anemia can be there are a lot of reasons why the patient can have anemia can be oxidative stress the chronic hyperglycemia advanced glycation end products chronic inflammation alter dpp activity increase in reactive oxygen uh, abnormal rbc and the use of certain medications like metformin ace inhibitors or arbs or, or the malabsorption well deficient all can the all of these can lead now certain ohas certain treatment uh, regimens Now patients can also lead to anemia. One is most important. One is medical. The routine practices lead to malabsorption of cells and leading to galloblastic anemia. Another is thiazolid bonds can cause marrow depression and anemia. Treatment with thiaz and ARBs are also associated with anemia development. TPP4 inhibitors and SGLT2 have shown some favorable outcomes. So more data and study is studies are required. So metformin, we all know, is associated with uh, uh, which induces malabsorption and leads to galloblastic anemia. Especially if B12 is used in higher doses for a period, long period of time, it can lead to B12 deficiency. And more especially in patients who are vegans or vegetarians, 
the B12 deficient. Sort of studies like ODAD, the ADOP study, or the U have also shown that if it form in you, early risk of anemia in a patient type 2 diabetes. Now, when we talk about diagnosis and monitoring of our patients, what we have to understand here is that A1 values do affect the, uh, 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 the hemoglobin or the iron values do affect the HbA1c. When we are treating a patient, it is not that if the patient has anemia, the A1c value will be higher. Maybe the patient is having good sugars. Or, you know, maybe before over-treating the patient, get the HbA1c value, you need to correct the anemia first. Even in situations where you are looking at HbA1c as a diagnostic criteria between diabetes or diabetes, and if the patient has anemia, then maybe you have to rectify the anemia first because it a diagnosis of diabetes. In these scenarios, maybe you can use alternate methods of diagnosing the glycemic control. Coming to detection and diagnosis, for uh, have to look at the measurement of the full blood count, the measurement of iron, maybe the B12, call it less. Also, because the symptoms between diabetes and anemia are the same, pain of lethargy, dizziness, or, uh, you know, uh, tiredness, do a CB and the diabetes, and then correct the underlying cause of what the patient is having. Treatment of iron deficient, uh, uh, target A1, HB, by, as told by the uh, Diabetes Anemia International Diabetes Foundation, a Southeast, a Southeast Asia group, is that target according to as being clinical state, and treatment response. Patients with diabetic 11 to 12, because if you increase your the risk of chances of stroke or CV events, in a running slide, an algorithm, a diagnosis of anemia, just look at the MCV count, the, uh, if it is a normal, look at megaloblastic anemia, the MCV, so correct the iron deficiency. Depending on what is the cause of anemia, megaloblastic anemia, iron deficiency anemia, or due to some chronic disease, accordingly, you can start treatment and uh, correct the uh, uh, hemoglobin levels. The most common treatment used in patients with iron deficiency anemia are oral preparations, ferrous ascorbate or ferrous sulfate. The effectiveness is high, it's low cost, and ferrous form is absorbed thrice as high as the And uh, ascorbic, uh, ferrous ascorbate is a synthetic ascorbic acid and iron in patients who cannot who can, there are few patients who cannot tolerate the um, oral dosages maybe then you can go for iv preparations but it has to be given by healthcare professionals that comes with some risk of anaphylaxis or, or severe hypotension now this is one study which one slide i would like to mention that study done where uh, you know they looked at the iron deficiency levels of a1c compare its level before and after iron supplement what they saw was that post treatment, 70% of patients in the pre diabetes range normalized to nor uh, the, nor uh, the normal diabetes range. So, what we are trying to understand is first try to correct the iron deficiency yeah, and then maybe treat your patient if your patient is having high sugar. Erythropoietin and analogs, in short, it is for having CKD and diabetic PSA have to be metformin deficient, have uh, metformin which. Periodic testing of B12 done if the patient is on high dose of metformin. Adjuvant therapy, like uh, non pharmacological measures to uh, like diet and all, can be included. Treat the treatable causes of anemia so that. Summarizing in patients with diabetes mellitus, prompt detection and correction of anemia is important. Treatment with oral or IV iron preparations and ESA needs individualized based on the clinical status and comorbid conditions. Excess um, correction of anemia associated with iron and overload adverse outcomes and therefore treatment with anemia should be carefully monitored with other metabolic risk factors. Ending my talk, I can do anything in the world because I have the right hemoglobin or the attitude in my blood. Thank you all for your patient hearing.